Hello, Bethel Community Church. This is the devotion for Wednesday, July 15th. And I've been looking through the Psalms and uh, the Messianic Psalms, and I'm going to do so again, looking at Psalm 16. So if you want to follow along, I'm in Psalm 16. Now, Psalm 16 is of David. That's actually in the Hebrew. It tells us it's of David, but it is about Jesus, as we shall see. And so I want you to think of these words as actually Jesus speaking them as I read the Psalm. Keep me safe, my God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. Apart from you, I have no good thing. I say of the holy people who are in the land, they are the noble ones in whom is all my delight. Those who run after other gods will suffer more and more. I will not pour out libations of blood to such gods or take their names upon my lips. Lord, you alone are my portion and my cup. You make my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night, my heart instructs me. I will keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, nor will you let your faithful or holy one see decay. You will make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. This is a Psalm of David, but it is about Messiah Jesus. Both the apostles Peter and Paul made that very clear in the New Testament. In Acts chapter 2, verse 25 to 28, we have Peter speaking, and it says, David said about him, about Jesus, I saw the Lord, he quotes our psalm, I saw the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest in hope because you will not abandon me to the realm of, dead, of the dead. You will not let your Holy One see decay. You have made known to, to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. Peter said this psalm is not about David, but is about Jesus. Paul in Pisidian Antioch in his first missionary journey agrees. He said the same thing. In Acts chapter 13, verse 35 to 37, it says, so it is also stated elsewhere, you will not let your Holy One see decay, quoting from our psalm. And Paul goes on to say, now when David had served God's purpose in his own generation, he fell asleep. He was buried with his ancestors and his body decayed. But the one whom God raised from the dead did not see decay. So it's really clearly a messianic psalm about Jesus. It's of David, about Jesus. Now, there are many truths here, but I want to look at just two specifically. First, Jesus took refuge in his Father. We should too. He took refuge in his Father. In this psalm, we see Jesus trusting his Father to preserve him in safety in order to complete his mission. We, we see Jesus model for us what it means to take refuge in God alone and to trust his will, God's will for his life, his Father's will for his life. And Psalm 16:1 says, keep me safe, my God, for in you I take refuge. That's how it starts. Now in Isaiah 42, verse six, another messianic Psalm says, I, the Lord, Yahweh, have called you the Messiah in righteousness. I will take hold of your hand, I will keep you and I will, will make you to be a covenant for the people and a light for the Gentiles. In scripture, we consistently see the father watching over and guarding his son, uh, even from the plots of demons and men. And he protected and cared for Jesus and saw him through to fulfill his mission. And just to give a few examples, the father protected the son when King Herod wanted to kill the toddler Jesus. In Matthew chapter two, verse 13, it says, when the Magi had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. And so he protected his son and, and, and was, he, he was reliable in making sure that no harm would fall, befall Jesus before his appointed time. The father also ministered to the son in the wilderness after being tempted by Satan. And he did that, of course, at the beginning of his earthly ministry. 
In Matthew chapter 4, verse 11, it says, Then the devil left him, after tempting him, and angels came and attended to him. The New Living Translation states that they took care of Jesus. They ministered to him. He's watching over his son. Jesus can rightfully take refuge in God the Father. The Father also ministered to the Son in the Garden of Gethsemane toward the end of his earthly ministry. In Luke 22, verse 43 to 44, after Jesus had prayed for his Father's will to be done, it said an angel from heaven, so God sent an angel, appeared to him and strengthened him. And being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. And in that critical moment, Jesus entrusted himself to his Father and his Father took care of the needs that Jesus had. He trusted in his Father's will, and he trusted in his Father's strength. We should too. If Jesus needed to do that, certainly we do. In Psalm chapter 46, verse 1 to 3, it says, God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. We're going to underline that again, because in this time in our culture, we need to hear that a lot. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth give way, and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. We have no reason to fear when we take refuge in the Father. It doesn't matter if it's a coronavirus, it doesn't matter if it's craziness and anarchy in our culture. We do not fear, because we take refuge in the one who can come through and provide everything we need to fulfill his promises. So the first truth is Jesus took refuge in his Father, we should too. The second truth is Jesus sought to do his Father's will and complete his mission. He was not about his Father's will. We already mentioned the Garden of Gethsemane where he said, it's your will, not mine, be done. In Psalm 16, verse 7 to 11, it said, I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night, my heart instructs me. I keep my eyes always on the Lord. That's good advice for us too. With him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, nor will you let your faithful or holy ones see decay. You make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. Jesus knew the purpose of his mission and he was set on accomplishing it. He knew he would die on a cross and he knew he would rise victoriously. Verse nine tells us he rested in that certain hope. He is safe in his father's promise even in death. Like us, Jesus had to trust the Father's promise that when he died, he would be raised up. Even though he is God in the flesh, coming through the incarnation, he had to trust his Father. So do we. But he knew that he could trust him. In verse 10, it tells us he would rise victoriously. In verse 11, it tells us he will sit at God's right hand, which he does now, and he will receive his inheritance. We are his inheritance. His inheritance is the nation's. It says that in Psalm 2, and it says that in Revelation 7. It talks about every nation, tribe, people, and language being there to worship Jesus. You are his inheritance. In John 14, 1 to 3, Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would have I told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you. What is Jesus doing now? He's preparing a place for you in heaven. So whether you're raptured first or you die first, the next place you're going to be is that's in heaven in a place that he's prepared for you. He says, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. Jesus wants us to be with him and we have to trust in his will and his purposes for our life, just as he trusted in the Father's will and purposes for his life. So understand, purchased and beloved bride of Christ, he's getting ready for you. He's getting ready to come for you. He is determined to do so, to complete that mission. So don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust him. Don't trust anything or anyone else. Psalm 16, 4 said, Those who run after other gods will suffer more and more. I will not pour out libations of blood to such gods or take their names upon my lips. Jesus was determined to do his Father's will. He was determined to purchase his bride and his, as his eternal inheritance. And he was determined to fulfill his mission. He modeled for us an, un, an unwavering trust for God. So he modeled an unwavering trust for God, which we need as well. He modeled an unconditional love for his church, which we would also perhaps model, it would be a good thing to do. And he determined to finish strong and fulfill his mission. We should as well. 
we should follow in his footsteps. Second Timothy 4, 6 to 8, Paul writing to Timothy said, For I am already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time for my departure is near. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. We all want to be able to say that. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. It's a promise he gives to all of us that we need to trust as we fulfill our mission. Like Jesus, let us take refuge in God, let us do his will, and accomplish our mission. Let me pray. Father, I thank you for the truth of your word. I thank you for the example of Jesus. I thank you for the fact that he did trust in you. You were a refuge to him. You came through for him. We see it over and over and over again. And Father, in our lives, we see you coming through for us over and over and over again. We can take refuge, refuge in you, even in uncertain times, even with fears that are out there, the coronavirus of anarchy and chaos that is taking place in our culture, with the uncertainty of the future. We take refuge in you. There's no reason to fear. And we know that you will help us accomplish your will for us as your bride, as the church, and individually as well. And so we trust you and we look to seek you and to do your will and follow through to finish strong so that we can say we fought the good fight, we have finished the race. And we know that what's in store for us is beautiful, tremendous, and glorious. And we trust in that truth with everything we have and all that we are. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for watching.